everybody, this is Anne. One technique for decorating your pottery is to carve all the way through the clay to create beautiful patterns of cutouts. It sounds easy enough, but if done incorrectly, cutting through the clay can weaken its integrity and cause issues such as cracking, warping, and slumping. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a vase with basic cutouts as I give you my best tips to maximize your chances for success. I wanted to make an egret vase. So my first step was to throw about a five or six inch vase, two and a half to three inches in the center, with a slight taper at the rim and at the foot. If you'd like more on my best tips for throwing, check out the link above. Tip number one is to let the piece dry to leather hard before starting your decorating. The stiffer clay will give you a much cleaner cut and will help the clay from slumping. For this piece, I wanted to create three egrets, so I divided the vase into thirds by using the division marks on my banding wheel. Then using a set square, or a triangular type of ruler, I measured upwards and marked the center of the vase at each division mark. I marked the center of the rim between each of my original marks. I measured over about a half inch from each of my marks, then connected the dots to create the neck and the beaks of each of the three egrets. Tip number two is when drawing your design, leave wide enough areas of clay between each designated cut area so it can withstand the stress of the drying and shrinking. I then drew in the neck lines to the body of the connecting egret. You can see how strategically I'm drawing my lines. Tip number three. A non-grog clay is the best choice for these projects for ease of not only drawing, but cleaning up your design lines and later cleaning up your cut edges. For overlapping lines, it's easy for me just to wipe them away with a damp sponge. With grog clay, the more you wipe away, the more pock marks you get. I connected those lines again to create a body line to the neck from each connecting egret, then extended those lines to create a wing line to the bottom of the pot. Now here's my blocky design. I always double check that the design is symmetrical and that I have everything drawn correctly so that where I make my cuts, I'll leave enough clay in between. Tip number four is to cut with a sharp enough tool that will not rip the clay or cause it to break. In this case, I'll cut with an X-Acto blade. The goal is for the clay to be the consistency of cold butter so the blade can easily slide through it. Notice I stabilize my hand with my pinky for a steadier cut. A lot of the time I'll do this in my lap. You can see that using the sharper tool makes a cut with less burrs and fewer areas to clean later. Once I had the top areas cut out, I continued cutting the inner areas of the necks. Now that's what I was going for. I still need to define some of the egret features which I will do with this slim petal carver. My clay is thick enough that I can shave away little bits from around the beaks. This will leave the beak to stand out from the surface, enhancing the design. If I had thrown the piece much thinner, I would have added extra clay to the area of the beak to help it stand out. I'll show you a sample of that later. I also carved around the top of the beak. Because my clay has no grog in it, 
I can damp sponge over those areas to slake down the carve marks, creating a smooth, seamless surface around the beak. I can then use my finger to flatten down any last raised areas and burnish the clay smooth. I repeated these steps around each of the three beaks. Notice that I have a few sharp points in my cutouts. The clay will be tempted to crack there as it dries and shrinks. Tip number five is to reinforce those areas where there is the most chance of cracking. I did this by placing little balls of clay in each of those areas and working it in. At this point, the cut edges are still squared off and sharp. Tip number six is to make your cut edges professional by rounding them off, softening them, and cleaning up the edges. I first softened the edge using a damp sponge, then I wet my fingers and worked the edges down and around. This also helps take away any burrs or sharp cut lines. You can also try using a strip of chamois cloth over the edge. I softened both the outer edges and the inner edges. Finally, I want to create definition between each egret along the body, you know, along that wing line. The clay is still soft enough that I can push the clay inward along one of those sides of the lines. I like to use the back side of my finger to start defining that edge. I then use the petal carver to define it even more. This also reinforces the clay along the edge so it won't crack. I then push down with my fingers on any leftover raised areas so it'll be more seamless. I repeated this for the other two egrets. For even more detail, I added an eye to each egret. I shaped an oblong piece of clay and worked down the edges so they were flat. I scored and slipped the piece and attached it right over the beak, working the edges down to the head. Using a fine line carving tool, I cut a slit into the oblong piece, then rolled a ball of clay and inserted it into the slit. I worked the edges down around the ball so it appeared to be inside of it. Using the sharp edge of the carving tool, I created the pupil. There she is. Here's one I made previously. The vase was thrown thinner, so instead of carving around the beak, I added clay to the beak for it to stand out. I also just added a small ball of clay for the eye, nothing fancy. I decorated this by painting lotus blossoms around the body, then glazing around the imagery with my white glaze. Of course, you don't have to do anything that fancy. It would look pretty if you just glazed the whole thing white. So I hope this project gives you some inspiration, or if you haven't done it before, even a little confidence to try decorating using the cutout technique. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.